वेलकम टू माई चैनल फार्मेसी पीटीआर दिस इज डॉक्टर शिखा चौहान एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फर्दर अबाउट द ग्लासी स्टेट्स एंड सॉलिड क्रिस्टलाइन प्रॉपर्टीज सो इफ यू विजिटिंग माई चैनल फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम प्लीज डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू माई चैनल फार्मेसी पीडिया फॉर गेटिंग फर्दर फ्री अपडेट्स so uh, before starting with the glassy states like we have discussed that there are various intermittent stages in the states of matter when the transition takes place from one state to or one phase to another phase for example in the previous session we discussed about the liquid crystals which were the intermittent stage when a solid phase gets converted to the liquid phase by melting down so this phase transition for different substances does not take place at one go this is a very slow process of the transition and the intermittent stages also is actually a separate phase of matter so in the modern classification the states of matter have been classified into 12 types so in my earlier videos you can refer for the details in part 1 and uh, like broadly they have been classified into solid liquid and gases but when we talk about the phase transitions and the intermittent stages intermittent stages acquires the properties of both the phases for example in the case of liquid crystals when the transition takes place from solid to liquid uh, the liquid crystals acquires the properties of solid phase as well as the liquid phase and they all together have their own different and unique property as well since they are neither liquid nor the solid so like glass is one of the classic examples of the intermittent stage so like it is a non equilibrium non crystalline condensed state of the matter now this is the intermittent stage condensed state crystalline state of the matter which exists between solid and the liquid so it exists for a short time on the scale but continuously relaxes and moves towards the transition phase of the liquid phase so now basically what happens is that silicon dioxide once it is being uh, cool melted down from solid to the liquid state the intermittent state observed is the glass state so that is why it is known as the non equilibrium non crystalline state of the matter because it exists for the period short period of the time now since it is a condensed state of the matter it exhibits a transition temperature now uh, it is a, we call the transition temperature that temperature whereby the glass is being formed so uh, below the transition temperature and above the transition temperature there are two separate phases so below the transition phase comes the solid phase and above the transition phase comes the liquid phase so when the glass is being formed out and when the solid phase changes into the liquid phase so once it starts converting into the liquid phase there comes a temperature whereby the glass is being formed and below this uh, stage the glass is into the solid form and above the stage glass moves towards a liquid phase transition so the structure of glass is basically similar to that of a super cooled liquid so these questions are generally being asked in the competitive exams mm -hmm. that what is the state of the glass so it is a super cooled liquid scl super cooled liquids and this spontaneously relaxes towards the super cooled state and it moves to the liquid phase so since the primary transition is starting from solid it moves down at the glass transition temperature it starts uh, converting into the fluid form until it forms the complete fluid form so their ultimate fate ultimate output ultimate product in the limit of infinite time is to crystallize so in this uh, uh, slide you can see that the, there is the tg written over there in the uh, graph over there so this is the transition uh, temperature glass transition temperature so below this temperature the glass exists in the solid form but above this uh, temperature it moves toward the super cool liquid state now this is again a crystal state like we discussed about the liquid crystals in our earlier session and above the state it moves like the green line you can see it is the liquid phase so uh, what happens at the molecular level is that the molecular chains are getting disordered dismantled so you can see and in the solid state you can see that highly organized structure but as the temperature is being raised out and we reach the tra uh, transition state you can see 
half of the structure have been dismantled and they are disorganized like the state of the gas so you can see this highly unorganized structure this is this is a uh, unorganized structure and this state is known as the glassy state now you can visualize the glassy state as a as a unorganized super cooled crystal state existing intermittent between two phases and acquiring the properties of both the phases and the molecular breakdown starts to happen now what are the ideal properties of the glass my dear students you must have noticed that when we talk about the pharmaceutical industry glass is used at various level it is largely used in the packaging of the various dosage forms maybe it is ophthalmic dosage form or ophthalmic uh, this is sterile dosage forms you must have seen glasses widely being used but there are specific properties of the glass which makes an it an ideal candidate for the packaging purposes the very first property it is very inert in nature more over it is mechanically very strong it is hard at the same time it has the elastic properties moreover it is resistant to the chemical corrosion it does not get that rust properties it does not rust down it is also resistant to the thermal shocks and has a high excellent heat absorbent properties it also has excellent optical properties and absorbs light and is also at the same time electrical insulating so all these properties uh, suggest that it is an ideal packaging candidate but the only disadvantage is that it is highly fragile in nature so it is uh, prone to break down very easily so while transportation while shipment adequate care and precautions have to be taken out in order to ensure that it reaches its destination in a uh, fully intact position now you are aware about the glassy state in this diagram you can see the stuffiness also referred to as the elasticity as the temperature is being raised out the solid glass starts to melt then it comes the transition state whereby it acquires the fluid like properties now it is getting converted into liquid state so before actually converting into the liquid state you can see it passes through, uh, uh, through a rubbery state whereby it becomes very hard and then it comes the rubbery flow and then at last you achieve this viscous flow so you can see the transition from the top to solid state to the bottom that is the viscous flow is not in a one go it goes through various phases of ups and downs whereby the properties also get alters and in between you get the glass transition point whereby the solid starts to melt down and it then passes through the rubbery state and rubbery means it is hard in nature but it is having more elastic properties then it later on moves towards a total liquid phase so this liquid phase is very viscous in nature so the temperature below which the polymer is very hard and brittle and above which it is very soft is called the glass transition temperature so you can also think in a way that below the glass temperature it exists in a solid state it exists in a hard state and it is very brittle in nature but above the glass temperature uh, since it acquires the rubbery state it is elastic in nature it is soft in nature and further it melts down further so the hard or the brittle state is the glassy state and the soft flexible state is known as the rubbery state now we move on to the solid crystalline substances so in pre formulation series you can understand what is the difference between amorphous substance and the crystalline substance now crystalline substances are recognized by their highly regular arrangement they have the repeated arrangement of and the molecules are very much in a uh, what do you call in a proper aligned structure whereas amorphous substance is recognized as a irregular pattern of the ions molecules or the atoms their uh, crystalline substances have a very sharp melting point and the examples include diamond and they are also called as anisotropic in nature whereas the amorphous substances since they have highly irregular patterns they melt over a range of temperatures and they the classic example is the glass that we have discussed just now they are also known to as isotropic substances so we refer to crystalline substances as a solid material in which the atoms molecules ions are organized in a highly organized structure 
so it has a defined crystal lattice so they have the repetitive arrangement in the same way and they have highest uh, forces of attractions among the molecules therefore the solids have high integrity and they melt at a specific temperature whereas the macroscopic single crystals are usually identified by their geometrical shapes and they consist of flat faces with a specific characteristic orientation the scientific study of crystals and crystal formation is known as crystallography so now you can say that crystallography is the science of study of crystals the process of crystal formation by mechanisms of crystal growth is called crystallization or solidification so this is again altogether a different science whereby you learn the different techniques of formation of crystals so uh, the diagram shown here is of the halite mineral crystal in the halite mineral crystal again it is a highly organized crystalline structure this is just an example of the substance whereby you can visualize the high order of molecular arrangements in the crystalline forms you can define through two colors you can visualize here purple and the green color so there is a cubic symmetry in the atom arrangement Overall, when we talk about the classification, crystalline solids are basically classified on uh, by four categories. The first is the uh, ionic crystals, metallic crystals, covalent network crystals, and molecular crystals. You have to memorize this classification that ionic crystals as so they are basically based by the type of the particles which they are made up of and the types of the chemical bonding that takes place between the particles for example ionic crystals have the ionic bondings metallic crystals they are bound with the metals covalent network is they are bound by the covalent bondings molecular clusters so like molecular clusters uh, crystals are again classified into three types the first is the non-polar polar and hydrogen bonding so depending on the type of the chemical bonding they have been classified you are supposed to read it in detail from the martin uh, in detail so that you can understand the chemical and physical properties of these substances thank you so much for watching my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel pharmacy ptf for getting further updates